Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be doing something fairly different from what I usually do. Rather than looking at Doctor Who items and talking about Doctor Who, I'm going to be talking about David Bowie. And hopefully this will be a first episode within a series where I talk about underrated um, Bowie songs. And I'm not just talking about, you know, songs which may be underrated to people who have only really heard Let's Dance and Space Oddity and things like that. I'm going to be talking about underrated Bowie songs even amongst, um, you know, big Bowie fans like me. And I've picked out three albums in chronological order that I own. I don't have a full collection, but um, I've picked out this period because this is probably the most underrated period of his work in the 70s. And I do not have The Lodger, unfortunately. You can't really find that because, you know, in Hong Kong, Bowie records aren't very abundant. But I'll just be talking about these three today, otherwise I'll go on for ages. So, I'm going to first talk about Station to Station. Now, Station to Station is an amazing album. I mean, I love the cover. And it is an excellent entrance for the Thin White Duke following um, kind of the end of the glam period. I know that, you know, there were albums before this which kind of suggested an end to the glam rock period, um, like Young Americans, but this album in particular is very different, very different from what he produced before. And like Low, the album cover is based off of an image from the film The Man Who Fell to Earth, and I think that's a great idea. This is a very interesting picture. This is one of the album covers which I stare at the most. It's not my favourite album cover, but it definitely is one of my favourites. It's a very unusual cover. And, I mean, you know, you're thinking, what is he looking at? What are these things? It kind of looks like um, that room in Prometheus, if you've ever seen that film, or, you know, in Alien. Um, but yeah, it's a very interesting cover. The red goes really well with the white. But anyway, I won't go on about the cover too much because we're talking about the songs, not the covers. I thought I'd just get the records out so I made it more interactive, I don't know. But yeah, so these are the songs which are on this record, and this is a reissued version, as you can see. But I don't mind. And we know Golden Years, we know TVC15, and most people know Wild to the Wind. And the ones I want to talk about are, well, the title track, Word on a Wing, and Stay. I'll start with the title track. So, what an excellent introduction for the Thin White Duke. We start off with this electronic train noise that gets louder and louder and faster and faster as if, you know, the Thin White Duke is coming to this station that we're at um, and then just passes. It's really interesting. The whole concept of the song, I don't really understand exactly. I mean, it's got something to do with trains right but it's lovely I think when I first heard it I didn't really understand it so I didn't enjoy it that much in fact I admit that I actually skipped bits um, because you know I, I found the build up very boring but no don't do that if you've not heard this song don't do what I did because the build up is the best part it's very interesting because just after Bowie's funk and soul influenced phase you see um, this kind of funk style intro into this song following the end of the electronic train noise. Um, but then rather than just having the bass and you know the, the typical instruments you'd hear, um, you suddenly hear this you know piano of, uh, doing this unusual melody. Um, and you know, you, you hear the piano a lot, you hear it on Word on a Wing, you hear it on TVC on Five. In fact, on TVC on Five, I'd say it's the most dominant instrument um, there. And it's just weird, but it works. It works and it has this unusual feeling which you don't get in any other Bowie album. And that's why this album is really special. Now this song has an excellent build up and the ending is amazing. You know, that second half of the song is absolutely amazing. I have nothing more to really say about that. Well, I do, but I don't want to keep you for too long. So I'll just move on to Word on a Wing. Now, when you look at this list, you have Golden Years up there. You have, 
you know, stay down there, the wilds, the wind and that kind of stuff. But word on a wing is in the middle, kind of, not exactly, because there's six songs here. But when you look at the back, it kind of draws your attention directly to that song. There's something special about this song. And I never really heard this song until I got this record, because what I like to do is I like to um, not listen to at least one song on a record so that, you know, not all the surprise is gone, because it, may, it makes it more fun, right? And Word on a Wing was the song that I chose. Now, when I first heard this song, I didn't exactly get to pick out all the things um, which I can now pick out when I hear this song. And oh, what an amazing song this is. Very, very powerful. Um, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't need to be so explosive like Station to Station or like um, TVC15 or as hypnotic as Golden Years because there's something special about it. I don't know what it is, but there's something very special about it. And much like Station to Station and probably other songs of the album that I'm unaware of, there is a strong religious context to this album, um, which I find fascinating in itself. Because when you look at the cover and kind of hear, you know, Golden Year, you don't really think of any religious context, but there is, and you know, um, there was also the photo shoots that he did where uh, he ha he drew the Tree of Life in the background. I don't know exactly how relevant that is to the songs on here, but this album and those photos and this period, this turbulent period, it is believed, in his career, you know, it all kind of represents itself on this album somehow. And Word on a Wing is that immensely underrated song on this album. If you haven't heard it, listen to it, it's brilliant. And the ending is quite nice and soothing, I think. I think I heard the ending, yeah. I definitely have. Now, the last one I talk about is Stay. Most people know Stay if they're Bowie fans, and most people say that Stay is either their favorite Bowie song if they're Bowie fans, or is, you know, the most underrated Bowie song. Now, I beg to differ, because Stay has that funk intro and it's very very cool and it was actually a jam it was a jam session i think originally but stay never really got to the charts and i know you know the billboard and the charts mean nothing to real art you know that that stuff is just money making crap stay has this incredible transition between the funk section and then this kind of disco kind of thing. When I hear Stay, and I hear that verse section and chorus section, I don't know why, but I can't help but think of 1984, the song he did on Diamond Dogs. They just share something in similar. It's just share something. Yeah, that's why, yeah. My English is getting worse, as you can see. And then it, you know, transitions back into the guitar and whatnot. It's fascinating. And it's one of my favourite songs, if not my favourite song in this whole album. It really captures the essence of the Thin White Duke in a different way that the other songs in this album don't achieve. And I love it. I absolutely love it. But for the two songs I'm going to pick on this album, oh yeah, sorry, I should have said, for each album I'm going to pick two um, underrated songs. I'm not going to pick Stay because Stay has already been widely acknowledged as an underrated Bowie song. And it is. It's great. The underrated songs that I'm going to acknowledge on this album are Station to Station, even though it's about 10 minutes long, just give it a go, give it, you know, give it a few listens, it doesn't get to you straight away, but it's such a fantastic song, and it's probably one of the most unique Bowie songs. Yeah, that's underrated song number one on this album, and then Word on a Wing. Now, Word on a Wing is another one that you kind of have to listen to a few times to understand what's going on, but it really does pay off. So those are the two underrated songs on this album. The next album we're looking at is Low, and this is the first Bowie record that I've ever owned, and probably the one that I hold dearest to my heart, not just to my intellectual interest in music, but actually to my heart, because this album manages to capture, you know, really powerful feelings that, you know, your crappy, you know, 
pop stuff that you hear these days just can't do. And this album has been regarded by people as the album that put the soul in the machine. Now, most people who know this album know Sound and Vision. That's an amazing song. I do have a lot of nostalgia when I hear that song. Um, and Breaking Glass. Breaking Glass is a very, very unique and interesting song. And if you're a Bowie fan, you've probably heard of it. And the pieces that I'm going to pick are Weeping Wall and Subterraneans. Now, I will, for the sake of this um, album and Heroes, I will pick two underrated instrumental tracks and then two underrated vocal-oriented tracks because I think that's just more fair because you listen to an instrumental song for a different reason than when you listen to a vocal song, right? So, you know, there's no point comparing um, and putting songs with completely different functions into competition with each other, not songs, music pieces. pieces. I say. Weeping Wall is the song which I originally kept forgetting because it's kind of, you know, wedged between Art Decade and which has a really unusual melody and kind of hooks you in for some reason and Subterranean which is an excellent sad um, closer. But I've listened to it again a few times and it, it's amazing. It, it does sound like a robot weeping and it's quite disturbing. And I think the instrument that's used to make that, create that effect is also used on Breaking Glass, which is one of the vocal oriented songs. But yeah, it's amazing. Um, I might have to listen to it a few more times again, just because I might have missed things, but that's one that I would recommend. But if you're gonna listen to these songs, listen to the whole album, okay? Because that's how you get in the whole, the whole feeling. Um, you don't have to you know, sit right next to the album the whole time and listen, but you can do other things as you're listening to it, but yeah. Now, the final one, Subterraneans, is probably the most underrated track here, um, instrumental-wise, because it's not really acknowledged like War's Hour, only really by small circles of Bowie fans. But it's, again, it's got that feeling to it that there really is, you know, a soul within the synthetic world. And I don't really know if that was his aim, but boy, is it powerful. It is powerful. And... It's probably one of the best songs he's put as a conclusion to an album. For the vocal songs, I'm picking Always Crashing in the Same Car because there's something very special about that song. It's very calming, soothing, and a great way to contrast from the more energetic and explosive sound and vision, the previous song. And then the second piece I'm going to pick is not Breaking Glass because, well, to be honest, Always Crashing in the Same Car is also kind of acknowledged. But Breaking Glass is quite, you know, acknowledged by Bowie fans. So I love that song, but I'm going to give another one a chance. And that is What in the World. Now, Iggy Pop came to sing on this song. I don't know if he actually helped write it or not, but what an interesting piece that is. Um, when I first heard it, I didn't really understand what was going on kind of just waited for Sound and Vision to play because that was the only song I really knew on this album and I got it. But it is bizarre and it's amazing. Yeah, other Bowie fans do agree that What in the World is a really underrated piece. I don't know exactly what the lyrics are about because I haven't heard it enough times, but the melody is just... It's not hypnotic exactly, but something along those lines. And if you haven't heard that piece, I'd recommend listening to it. It's very interesting. Now, on to Heroes. Okay, the final album we'll be looking at is Heroes, the legendary album um, with probably one of my favourite covers of all time. To be honest, I think the covers, the album covers that um, were released, were part of the, um, the, the albums that Bowie worked on, have probably some of the best um, pictures. So we all know Heroes, and quite a few fans know Beauty and the Beast, which is a great song as well. And... Quite a few Bowie fans also know Joe the Lion, which is one of my favourite pieces. To be honest, there is no ranking of songs on this album. They're all good for me. I, I, I would never make a top, you know, ranking list of songs on this album because they're all good to me. I don't really understand why people think that one song is 
worse than the other. They're all masterpieces in their own right. And they're very different songs as well. They all have different purposes. So I'm just going to talk about underrated ones. Um, a lot of Bowie fans know Blackout as well. And that is partially because of the fact that it's just so weird. I mean, most of the songs of this period are very unique, but Blackout in particular is very, very, very interesting. Unfortunately, for some people, it's a bit too raw, and it was a victim of the sound war that was occurring at the time. But, you know, if you're going to listen to songs in the Heroes album, of course you're going to get raw stuff. Same with if you listen to The Idiot, what you're going to expect. And, you know, Blackout is an excellent representation of that rawness. The story behind this song is also very interesting. And I don't know if I'm going to call it rap, but the rap-esque sections are very, very cool. And they are a great way to bring the listener's attention back to the piece. And I, I really enjoyed the first time I heard that rap section. I thought, whoa. This is cool. And then another piece, which is actually above Blackout, Sons of the Silent Age, is one that I don't really understand. Um, but it's one that I think is really underrated, even if I don't really understand what it's about, per se. Um, oh, it is powerful. When you listen to it and you hear... I'm going to call it the chorus because the structure of this piece is slightly different to a standard one. When you hear that chorus section, and you'll know what I mean if you've heard this song or are going to listen to this song, it's powerful. It is very, very emotionally moving. And I'm not really one for listening to songs for emotional reasons. I, I kind of listen to them because they got the funk or, or you know, I like, I like what they do and things like that, you know, that you can't really describe it in words, you just listen to songs because it's cool, that's what it is, it's cool. That's the closest thing I can kind of translate that feeling to. Sons of the Silent Age is, is a different thing, and it's a very interesting song to put after Heroes, the giant anthem, because it's got a very different feeling Heroes has got an optimistic feeling, but Sons of the Silent Age kind of has this very depressing and hopeless sense to it, and it is very underrated. The final vocal piece I'm going to talk about is Secret Life of Arabia. Now, this is a masterpiece. What a gem this is. A great way to end the album as well. It's nice that they put a vocal-oriented piece on side B. I think it would have been a bit, um, not boring, because they've done it on low and it worked, but... I think it would be a bit predictable if they all had vocal ones. It's a nice surprise. That's what it is. Um, and the guitar sections. I, I just heard this song before I did this video. So even though I've heard it many times before, I just thought mm, I might listen to it again in case I have anything else to say about it. And actually, I did pick out some things which I didn't hear the first few times I heard this song. The guitar sections are an incredible thing. And so for the underrated vocal-oriented pieces, I am going to pick Sons of the Silent Age and The Secret Life of Arabia because Blackout, much like Breaking Glass and Always Crashing in the Same Car, is, you know, talked about a lot amongst Bowie fan circles. But Secret Life, not so much. A few people, maybe, and definitely not Sons of the Silent Age. I've never heard anyone talk about that song, which is kind of ironic. Not ironic, but because, you know, silent. V2 Schneider is one that a lot of people talk about Great piece. I think the person who helped work on Autobahn helped with this one. I'm not so sure, but I think something like that happened. So yeah, it's one that's widely recognised amongst Bowie fans. Sense of Doubt is one that's not really recognised by Bowie fans. I like this piece because, you know, if you if you know about the other stuff that I do on YouTube, you know that I'm a Doctor Who fan, and this sounds like something you'd hear in the, the, the 80s of Doctor Who um, episodes, kind of like Resurrection of the Daleks, I can imagine Sense of Doubt playing. And yeah, it's interesting. It's a very unique piece. They're all unique. Anyway, the next one is Moss Garden. Now, Moss Garden is one of my favourites. Now, this is a very unusual thing to say, 
but I really like it. And the reason I say it's unusual is because I've noticed a lot of people don't like this piece or put it as a meh, um, you know, like average, which I don't really understand. People say this song is, these, these two tracks, Moss Garden and Nukon, are bland. Gosh, they're not bland, they're amazing. Um, and it's nice that Sense of Doubt leads into Moss Garden as well. Moss Garden's really relaxing. Um, it's a really nice feature to have the koto playing in um, this album. Because I, I think this is the only piece where that instrument plays in all of his songs, um, that at least have been released. And Nukon is very, very crazy, if that's the right word. It kind of sounds like something you'd hear in Blade Runner, the original, not the, the new one. Um, but yeah, great pieces. And the intro to Nukon is, is very mysterious. I really like that. I like it about it. It's a little, for some people, they find it a little long. I don't find it a little long at all. I think it's a perfect build up. Sometimes you need the absence of sound or musical sounds before you get into the piece. And Moss Garden is very relaxing. I think the purpose of this piece was to induce feelings of calm and is very effective. It's also got a kind of uplifting feeling as well. And sometimes a bit more than Heroes. Although, you know, Heroes is song that we do not ever compare with other pieces just because of its stature. So that's it for today.